Hey there folks, JD here, and today we have got a slightly different uh, quadcopter. This one is the Hubson um, H111 Nano. Now apparently this, as it says on the box, is, I don't know if you can read that, but it says it is the world's smallest quadcopter. Now, I don't know that to be true, uh, but obviously if it's on the box then I'm guessing that uh, that it's, it's got, it holds some weight. So let's open this up and have a quick little look inside and see what this copter has to offer. So, right. Oh god, that's really stuck on. Right, okay. So, once you open it up, this is what you get. You get your little quadcopter and you get, of course, a little transmitter. So let's get everything out of the box here and let's have a little, a proper little look at it. So there we have it. And of course, what you will have also is the instruction manual. So one instruction manual inside the box, as well as a transmitter, the copter, and some accessories. So this transmitter, this seems, even though you know we're used to always having small transmitters with nano quadcopters. This one does seem really, really small. Uh, so I don't know if you can see it in comparison to my hand. I, mean, I don't have the biggest hand in the world, but that is certainly a very small transmitter. Uh, let's have a quick little look and see how it compares to the CX-10 transmitter. Let's have a quick little look at that, because I'm quite intrigued to see if it is the same or if it's slightly smaller. So this is the CX-10 and this is the Hudson. And it looks to be the same size. Um, oh no, it is a little bit smaller. There's really not much in it, but the the Hubson one, the one, one with the red uh, buttons, that is certainly a little bit smaller. So what they've done, it seems, is that they've taken your standard uh, quadcopter, your standard nano quadcopter transmitter, and they have made it smaller. So <laughs> that's probably going to be quite interesting when we come to fly it. Right, but obviously we shall soon see that when we take her out. So let's get to the interesting part. Let's get to the quadcopter. So let's undo the bands which hold it down. And this thing is tiny. Oh wow! So look at that. This is really, really small. So, if I was to do a comparison again with the CX-10, because everybody knows the CX-10 is a tiny and very popular quadcopter, the Hubson is actually a little bit smaller. So <laughs> it's taller as it goes, but it's a little bit smaller in size. That is really interesting because I always thought the CX-10 um, was one of the smallest ones that you could get, but obviously not anymore. So this is the Hubson, the H111. So if I flip it over, you will see that it has no covering on the bottom. It is just an open PCB. So, um, or printed circuit board rather. So that in itself could have some issues when you come to fly it. I believe, it does, even though it doesn't say on the packaging, but I believe I would keep this one as an indoor copter. Because if any of this PCB here gets wet, it's going to eventually affect all the chips on the board. And you're going to find that when that little those little water globules, when they dry, it's going to start to pull off the solder. So I would probably, if you are going to get this one, I would keep this as a purely indoor copter. So a couple of things to note about it. So you have the white blades, which denote the forward facing, and the black ba blades, which denote the back of the copter. It has a tiny, I don't know if you can see that, but this here, this is your charging pin. And quite literally, it is a pin. <laughs> So you've got to be careful with that, make sure you don't snap it. There is also a little on and off button, a button on the underneath of it as well. So you will have the blue flashing lights to denote the front and the red for the back. I don't know if you can see that, but that is, that's really bright. I think it's coming across quite well. Um, but there we have it, the, those, those little LEDs are fantastic. So let's just turn that off. So once again, the on and off button is this little button here. All right. And that's it. I mean, it's got a, a bit of a casing on the top of it. Uh, it doesn't look as if you can take the battery out. Um, but then again, if you get a little bit inventive, what you could do 
Now, I don't think this is going to be um, in any way, shape or form um, accepted by the manufacturer, but if you needed to re replace the battery, I would think that you could take the outer casing off just by moving these little clips here and then take the casing off and underneath the casing you can just see the little bit of silver there that is the battery so you may be able to replace it if I can just I don't know if you can see that probably not because the camera I'm using isn't great but that little silver bit there that is the length of the battery so if you could get them I suppose you may be lucky enough to replace it then again this did only cost me eight pounds so whether or not you're going to want to pay £4 for a battery or £8 for a whole new unit. Uh, to be honest with you, I'd probably pay for a whole new unit. Right, so that is the little quadcopter. I'll tell you what, I'll put it back on there. You can probably see that a little bit better than if it's just against the black of the table. Right, so let's, let's have a little look at the accessory box. So I'm guessing we're going to get your standard accessories. Uh, yes, we have. So there we are. We have the one charger. That charger is for the quadcopter. And as I said earlier, you've got a little pin at the back. See if I can angle that a bit better for you. Yeah, a little gold pin at the back there. And that just clips in to the charger like, like so. And then you would just charge the whole copter off USB. Alright, so you get a standard 45 minute charge wait when you're having that charging as well. So because this copter is quite small and the blades are quite flimsy, you do get a little pack of new blades. Two black and two white. So that is very interesting to, to note as well. Because with some quadcopters, especially the nanos, you don't get you don't always get little blades. So that is the accessory pack as well. So now we come on to the important bit. The transmitter. So, as we've already established, the transmitter is slightly smaller than your average uh, nanocopter transmitter. Uh, it has got the same functions, in so much that up and down, left and right, and a circular motion, and likewise up and down, left and right, and a circular motion here as well. Both of them click. One of them is to, and let me just hold it in the right way so it faces me. So, this one here, that would alter your speed, so one click would be its average speed, second would be sl uh, slightly faster, and three would be, oh my god, where's my quadcopter gone speed. Um, you do get a couple of other buttons on here as well. Standard on and off button, and your trim up and down, left and right as well. So there's your trim, and there's your trim as well. Likewise, a little LED. Now if it's anything like the other quadcopter um, transmitters that we've seen, that little LED there will light up red. And then as standard it's just to bind to the quadcopter, it's just a motion of up down and then it'll bind to the copter. But we'll see all that when we take it out for a flight. And then you've got your standard AAA batteries that fit in the back there. So once you've got the AAA batteries in, then you just plug it plug the back back in and you're away to go. There is no charging method for this transmitter, which is a pretty standard feature for most of the nanocopters. So if you are to replace the batteries, you will have to replace the batteries with either non-chargeables or chargeables and use your external charging kit to do that. So there we have it folks. This has been the Hubson H111. Um, a nice little quadcopter, although I do believe it's, you know, it's, it's going to fall under the category of I just lost my quadcopter. So uh, please join me again uh, when we're going to be taking this little guy out. I'll try and see if I can tidy up the back garden and we'll get him going around my back garden rather than taking him over to the field where I believe we might lose him. So folks, thanks very much for watching and listening. Don't forget to subscribe so you are, are completely up to date with all of my quadcopter videos. We've got a new set of quadcopter batches coming in where we are going to have some big quadcopters, some standard quadcopters and some large quadcopters as well. So you're not going to want to miss those. All right then folks, well until next time, happy flying.